Hi everyone, my name is Jason of the blog Jason D. Moore Photography, and today I'm going to walk you through the process of creating a multi-layered image effect, uh, similar to what Matt Klaskowski used in his new book, Layers, The Complete Guide to Photoshop's Most Powerful Feature. First off, we're going to open a source document, such as this. It's a document that has multiple layers and will illustrate the effect very well. The first thing we need to do is to turn all of these layer masks into visible layers so that when we export the layers to files later in the next step they will show up very well for us. The first thing that we need to do is to create some layers to illustrate the layer masks themselves. So the first thing we need to do is to select our bottom most layer mask and create a new layer above it. Next, control click on the layer mask below and hold down control shift or command shift and the letter I to invert that selection. Click over on your foreground color swatch and select a red color. The way we're going to illustrate the layer masks is to essentially create a look similar to the quick mask mode where everything uh, that is black in a, in a layer mask will be red and everything that is white in the layer mask will be transparent. To do this we're going to fill uh, within that selection on the new layer with the red color. To do this we're going to hold Alt Backspace on PC or Option Delete on Mac and deselect by holding Command or Control and the letter D. Next we're going to do that all over again by selecting our next layer mask, creating a new layer above, Control clicking on the layer mask itself, holding Command or Control Shift and the letter I, and Alt, Backspace, or Option, Delete. The next step is to disable those layer masks we just used to create these other layers. So the way we're going to do that is hold down the Shift key and click on the layer mask itself. Next we're going to let Photoshop do some work for us by going up to File, Scripts, and Export Layers to Files. Locate where you would like to save those files, hit OK, and simply run the action and let Photoshop go to work. What it's doing right now is separating out each of the layers that uh, make up your document and saving them as separate documents that you can then use later on uh, in the next steps. As you will recall from the original design, each of the layers had a frame around it similar to what you would see in a normal everyday Photoshop document. So what we need to do is open up that original file so that we can have the proper size for that frame as you will see here, and now hide all of the layers. Now to get that frame on a PC, hold down Alt and Print Screen, and then Control N to create a new document to those dimensions, hit Enter, and then Control V to paste. Next, go over to your Crop tool, you can also do this by pressing the letter C, and then crop around the area we want to keep. The next step is to place all the layer files we just exported into this frame so that we can use them later on. And now hold down Command or Control Shift and the letter S to save it. So just going to put that as one. That's going to be our top layer. And now we can just simply replace the contents by right clicking on the name of the layer in the Layers panel and going up to Replace Contents. Now we're going to go right down the line and select the next one. Every time that we do that we're just going to do Control or Command Shift and letter S again. I'm going to just name that 2 and go back and replace the contents. I'm not going to go through and do this for every layer document. It's pretty repetitive so you can just go ahead and do that yourself. The first thing we need to do is give this image some perspective. So we need to move over to the transform area and drag the vertical perspective to the right. If you'd like you can give it some horizontal perspective. You'll see that when we did that it distorted the image a little bit making it seem a little more elongated than uh, is my taste. So to fix that, hold down command or control and the letter T to free transform. 
you'll notice that since we're using a smart object, the image will temporarily jump back to a straight on perspective um, while we're making these sort of changes. This as well as later on when we warp. Um, and you can just uh, don't let that get to you. That's the way it's going to be. And uh, <clears throat> it will go back to the uh, perspective that we created in the lens correction filter uh, once we commit the change. So what we're going to need to do now is just simply click on the top and drag down to truncate it a little bit, make it a little squashed. Next we need to warp the image to give it that wavy feel. So hold down Command and Control and the letter T again. Click on the Warp tool and simply drag straight up on both the top and bottom on the right side and straight down a little bit on the top and bottom handles on the left side and commit to transform by clicking on the check mark at the top. And next we're going to click on our layer effects button, select drop shadow, and adjust your settings to taste. I'm going to raise the opacity, give it some distance, increase the size, something like that, and click OK. The next step is to lower the opacity of each of the lower layers, keeping only the topmost layer showing the final document at full opacity. To save on time, I've already gone through and made those adjustments to each of the layers after I've placed them into my document. So I'm going to just hide this layer here and turn on my layer group to show you all of the layers that I've done. The only thing left to do to polish this effect is to add a background, and there you have it. It's a lot of repetition, but once you get the process down with your first one, the rest of it just comes right together. I hope you guys had fun with this one. I know I did working through the process trying to figure out how it was done. Give it a try. Let me know how things work out for you. As always, you can check out more information on my blog, www.jasondmore.com, or see other videos that I've produced here on my YouTube channel, which is www.youtube.com slash jasondmorephoto. Till next time, my name is Jason of the blog Jason D. Moore Photography. Thank you very much.